this is Lisa Phillips. Um, thank you all. I discussed the three main challenges for business analysts um, when they're doing the requirement solicitation. Now, um, I just got to say up front, um, as a developer and someone who's been on the front end to do this, as a developer, this is the most important aspect, requirements gathering. And these are the areas that we honestly see every single project the most um, issues with that affects our work to deliver what we need to deliver on time within budget, okay? So it's very important and we're going to go um, next. I'm going to explain some of them and how, you know, you can alleviate some of the issues. Um, so the first main issue is scope problems and that is putting in items that are nice to have but aren't necessary. And a way to really combat, you know, and, and I said in a previous podcast, you need to be sensitive to coming in on time and on budget. So everything that comes in the door, even though you're going to serve your client, you really need to go, okay, I'm going to here to serve my client. I'm going to give you everything we can as long as we can do it within budget and on time with the resources we have. You just have to be sensitive to that. There's no other word to really describe it. Um, there's some people who just say yes, yes, just to accommodate, and that's good. But always accommodate with a caveat. Accommodate with this will add more time um, to the program. Or, or this will add more cost to the budget because we need more resources to do it on time. So it's okay to present it to the stakeholder. Just make sure you present it to the stakeholder in terms of cost and time. Um, I run my own business. Guess what? Those are my two most important factors. You say that to me. And I under think that you really understand my needs. You get the business, and that is it. And guess what? It doesn't matter that if you're a small business owner or a large CEO. You put it in terms of that every single time, and that sort of takes care of you. So then they can make the decision if it's worth those extra costs and time. So another part to helping to alleviate this, other than you know you personally being a business analyst that can really keep this in perspective, is refining the scope and really clarifying the needs, not the wants. Um, during this clarification. So when you're going over these um, statement of works and documents on the scope, just make sure it's all need based because that way you can determine if you're trying to, um, your need is in to increase um, customer participation on your website and interaction. Well, then you know, um, you know, maybe having pretty colors isn't the big deal, um, isn't as much of a priority as uh, making sure that there are um, call to actions on the web page. So this is just a smaller example, but a call to action to get you to actually do something as a customer is much more important than making sure the color scheme is right. I'm not saying the color scheme is not important, but this is how you really prioritize what nearly needs to be on and what you're going to spend money and resources on. Uh, two, understanding. Now I've seen this before and it's hard sometimes to just admit you don't know what you want, but I'm pretty technical. I can talk about a wide range of tools, but you might get really deep into an Oracle database. I just don't get to the system global access layer. I don't go there. So when you start talking about cash and stack exchanges, I might not know it. And that's fine. Every thing can be learned. I have so many books on my shelf of so things you can learn. You just have to ask the question. It's okay. Ask them to slow down. You know, Reddit's a popular site right now. It has um, explained to me like I'm five. And that's exactly what life should be if you don't understand something. If you can't explain it like I'm five, you can explain physics like I'm five. So you should be able to explain what you need in a requirement if your requirement solicitation when you don't get it. And, you know, say you're going to ask a lot of questions and you feel that, you know, you don't want to come off that way. Well, preface the meeting with saying I'm new to this, assume I know nothing, and I'm going to ask you questions like that. So it might be a lot. It's okay to say that. Just premise it. If you have too much pride and ego, that's just going to get in the way. And this work's going to get carried down to the developers and they're not going to understand it because it wasn't clearly defined in the requirements gathering. So don't do that. I, there's nothing more you can say to that except, you know, questions should be your friend, okay, during this process. And um, volatility problems. That is changing project stakeholders. Um, it could also be like the requirements are changing. First you said you wanted the um, um, the first row of this line to look like this, now you're saying you want it formatted differently. And there's ways to control that volatility. You know, you need to set limits on acceptable limits of change and use incremental approaches to um, using, um, of changing requirements as well as putting different requirements in version releases if it's a software um, lifecycle development project that you're on. So there's ways of queuing up the volatility to be able to work with it. 
Um, and make sure you have buy-hold uh, buy-in from different stakeholders. So if one stakeholder does leave, you're not just left depending on one stakeholder to give you what you need. You got to establish those relationships uh, with everything. And I would give you suggestions that really um, helped me. Your own personal training is to read how to win influence and influence people. So it really helped me on gaining uh, accommodation. And also, um, Bob Burke has the book called The Go Giver. And it's all about how when you give to other people, you get things, um, you know, self, um, enlightened self-interest. You get everything you want back when you really care about the person you're giving to. And when it comes to stakeholders and getting buy-in, that might be something that might just tip you over into getting the buy-in you need, especially when there is volatility and what's going on. So uh, next, I'm going to re um, discuss reducing requirement elicitation errors. Thank you very much.